Howdy, partners. Steinberg just released Cubase 9.5. And today, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the buggy. What's up everyone? We're back with a, another tutorial in Cubase. This is less of a tutorial and it's gonna be less of a rant to be totally honest. I want to discuss some issues that I'm having with Cubase 9.5, the update, sort of uh, make you aware to the pitfalls that I discovered and how I pushed through them and let you know that it's okay to upgrade. It's all good. The, there's nothing wrong with the upgrade. There's just growing pains. And when you're a power user and things are even slightly different, it throws you off a bit and you're going to need to spend some time with the program, getting it to be the way you want once more, and then everything will be okay. And I'm trying to stress that while saying there are some good things, there are some bad things, and there are some buggy things about the new Cubase update. So let's get into the good. Do we, we, we. If we wanna look at the good things, there are some feature additions to Cubase. There's obviously revised automation, a new instrument in Halion Sonic called Flux, or a new module. So we can take a look at that here. It's a wavetable synthesis that sounds pretty, pretty awesome. And there's some new content in Groove Agent SE as well. Uh, but the main show is they've added automation Bezier curves and there's 16, if we look at the mix rack, 16 audio inserts per track. That's a big one. There's some redesign. I don't know, I could go through all this stuff, but I think that other people have already done it. So I'll put a thing up here in the corner to uh, Chris from Mixdown Online. He did a video about all the new stuff in Cubase. He's much more thorough than I care to be at this instant, and he probably could explain it at least as well as I could, if not better. So let's move on from the good, which is the boring stuff, and let's get to the exciting stuff, the bad. Like all versions of Cubase, whenever I've upgraded, they sometimes forget some settings, and that's not a big deal. When I started to try to use it for the first time, my preference of key editor background was different, and they this happened last time I upgraded, and it drove me crazy. Um, so here's the editor area. This is what it looks like by default, which I don't like. I don't like the level of contrast. You know, you put the red bars on the dark gray and you can't tell. And then the difference between a gray and then the dark gray, I just don't like this. So I changed it to this, the white, which is I'm more used to, and it just makes me feel better. So that's one thing that I changed. You know, another thing is that if you look here, there's different fonts here in the mix console and obviously in visibility, instead of like a radio button, it's just check marks. And this stuff is so ticky tack, you know, it's nitpicky and that's fine because I use Cubase so much that I will notice this stuff and not like it at first because I'm particular or I'm used to the old version. And it's the type of thing where six weeks from now, it won't make a difference, I'll be totally used to it. But I see so much vitriol, so many people spitting venom on the Steinberg forums about changes that were made to Cubase and it's two steps back and I'm gonna switch DAWs. Honestly, I think as of this second, Cubase 9 is probably my favorite DAW. Cubase 9.5 is probably in second place, but give it six weeks working with this and I'll get comfortable with all the new features you know, the layouts, everything, I'll get it tuned to exactly the way I like it and everything will be okay. But I wanna warn you all about one more pitfall that I had out of the box and that is in the drum editor. So if we open up the drum editor here, uh, I had this issue because by default, use snap from drum map was on and this was tough. I would change the quantize and the grid wouldn't change. And I'd never had that setting activated before in my life. I was always a use quantize guy. And 
that allows you to draw stuff in the way that you want. And when you edit drums as much as I do, uh, MIDI drums, I mean, I probably spend two or three hours. Not being able to change the quantize was a huge deal breaker. But fortunately, I put this on the forum and a user named Niles, he was able to help me say, you know what, you might have this accidentally selected. And I was able to change it back to use quantize, which is what I'm very much used to. And now I'm fortunate to announce that everything is okay in Cubase land. Because if that didn't work, I would have had to use nine exclusively. And I think when you switch versions, your workflow will be slightly disrupted, but it's worth it to take advantage of the new features. The only thing is that if you're working for clients, if you're doing client work, I had a session yesterday where I was working with a client and I definitely used Cubase 9 just because my speed, there was no wild cards, nothing out of the ordinary. And I was using my template with all of my preferences saved. And I would advise that that would be my pro tip. The nice thing about Steinberg is that they let you use previous versions if you're licensed for the most recent version, which is a lifesaver because there might be some things you don't like or some things that are not working the way you're used to, but you can always revert. I could use 8.5 or eight if I felt like it or nine, but I'm gonna try to use 9.5 as much as possible so that I get used to it because it is the future and I wanna be up to date on the latest features when we move on to 10 and 10.5. I'd just like to stay up to date and have all the tools that are necessary in an arsenal under my control. So moving on, that was the big thing that was a shock, you know, the, the key editor and drum editor coloring and then this snap from drum map where, where you can't change it. But I think it's time to move on to the buggy. And the buggy is a new feature I know that people are complaining about Cubase 9 crashing out on them. Has not happened to me yet, so I'm fortunate to announce that that's okay. I'm sorry if it happened to you, but it certainly hasn't happened to me. But the buggy thing is in this new feature called Adapt to Zoom. So here, you know, we're used to being able to navigate the project by bars or by beats or by quantize. You know, we can skip forward places and if we snap, you know, things will move by quantize or bar or beat. And there's a new feature called adapt to zoom. And here in the project window, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, so as you can see, the zoom here is set to quarter notes. And if I move this forward, it moves forward quarter notes. If I zoom out more, it becomes half notes. It'll move forward half a bar. If I move out more, I think the, it becomes a bar. Now, if I move in, now it's whatever, uh, 30 second notes, it'll move by a 30 second note. And it all works pretty well here in the project window where there's a little bug that I've discovered is in the editor window with adapt to zoom, the quantize grid map does not redraw itself. So if we do adapt to zoom, okay, right here it's at 16th notes and I draw them in. Now let's say I wanted to use adapt to zoom. I want to change this to 30 seconds by getting a little closer. There it's 30 second notes. Let me draw this in. If you notice, it won't draw on the remapped grid line with adapt to zoom. That's just a small little bug. And I know that people are willing to freak out. Oh, you said you were going to give us this and it doesn't even work in the drum editor or key editor. And I think that those people should CT FD because being a computer programmer myself, I understand that Steinberg made a product here that's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lines of code, and it functions so incredibly well. And when they introduce new features, they might not be fully ready for prime time, but I'm sure that an update is coming down the line that's going to fix this and make the feature work seamlessly. I think that all the outrage may need to stop. as. I've demonstrated today, I've seen some bad things. I've seen some buggy things about the new Cubase 9.5. And yet I rushed out to get the update. I'm going to use it. I'm going to learn all about the new features. I'm going to incorporate them into my workflow and I'm gonna be ready for subsequent versions as they come out. And that's my advice to you, just do it. Pull the trigger, upgrade. If you need to preserve your workflow, you can always revert to the old version, but there's something great about getting a new piece of software, even if it's just minor upgrades that may slightly improve your workflow. I would say pull the trigger because 
music is bay, and it's good to have the newest, ballerest sequencer that you could possibly have. So in conclusion, I'd like to say thanks for watching, everybody. This has been my rundown of Cubase 9.5, the good, the bad, and the buggy. Oh yeah, and one more thing. I put on my cowboy boots just to make this video, so I have to show them before I go. Uh, uh, see? See? Ha, 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 ha.